Hi guys, QI here, and today we'll be taking a look at out of position 3-bet bots, specifically when we 3-bet from the small blind versus the button and the bot is low. So uh, I'll go through some important sizing ideas, uh, including why it's important to size up on these types of textures. One type of range really doesn't work so well here. So we'll go into more detail about uh, what our c-betting strategy looks like, as well as how to play versus and in positions there. And along the way, we'll probably also be looking at uh, how in position defense versus a c-bet, as well as the hands that uh, he's supposed to step versus a miss c-bet. So first of all, when it comes to our c-betting frequency, we don't actually c-bet that often on these spots. So on average, uh, we bet about slightly less than half the time, and on some of the lower bots, it actually drops to less than 40%. And the main reason for this is that the small blind is tributing a very linear range of mostly big pass and high cards. And on the bot, like 8 high or 7 high, all of the high cards actually just miss. So uh, that's the reason why we don't get to bet that often. And you see this reflected in the equities as well. Uh, the equities run very close on the lower bots, but as the bot gets higher, uh, it's actually not so bad. Uh, so the, the fact that equities are close and we're out of position, it's actually kind of surprising that we even get to bet about half the time. In most situations, if equities are 50-50, uh, the out of position player doesn't usually do a lot of betting. Uh, you see a lot of situations where he just checks his entire range. But here it's slightly different because uh, even though the equities run close, out of position actually has a big nut advantage in the form of overpass. So if you think about both players' ranges, the small blind's range is pretty much overpass and overcuts, and what allows him to polarize his range very effectively is the huge amount of bluff catches in the button's range. So the button is going to have a whole bunch of pocket pair hands, uh, he's going to have a bunch of suited connectors that make one pair on these boards, um, and all of these hands, they're basically bluff catches that lose to the small blind's overpass and beat his overcuts. And this includes hands like Ace Queen as well, because Ace Queen actually beats most of the uh, the small blinds overcut bluffs. So what we end up with is a kind of nuts or air toy game where the small blind is betting most of his nut hands, he's balancing it with the appropriate amount of bluffs, and then proceeding to give up some bluffs uh, across the remaining streets. So that's just a very general picture of what's happening on these bots. As the bot gets lower, this picture becomes more accurate because the small blind's range is almost exclusively uh, overpass and overcut. But as the bot gets higher, so on 10 high bots for example, uh, the small blind is going to have hands like 8s and 9s, so its range isn't 100% polarized. Uh, but we can still use a very polarized strategy with a big sizing. Uh, we just have to remember to check hands like 8s and 9s. And of course, the button's range as well isn't 100% bluff catches. It's gonna have some very strong hands like two pass and sets. But the thing is, at this sort of low SPR, we don't really have to care that much about these hands. Uh, first of all, we're not losing so much relative to the pot the times that we get stacked. Um, and on top of that, the button is also going to be forced to call us much wider compared to when the SPR is higher. So in a single race pot, for example, we don't usually just go crazy with our overpass because by the time all the money goes in, uh, first of all, we lose a lot the times that we are behind, uh, but on top of that, because of how deep the stacks are, uh, our opponent doesn't actually have to call us that wide in order to make our bluffs break even, uh, since we're just risking such a, a huge amount relative to the pot. But in a 3-bet pot, when the SPR is low, our bluffs are risking a lot less relative to the pot. So our opponent ends up uh, calling us much wider than usual, and that really makes the proportion of nuts in his range, uh, the proportion of nuts in his continuing range, much more insignificant. So what I've done here is run two different sims on the same 853 2 tone board. The sim on the top uh, is where we use a more polarized spot size strategy, and the one on the bottom we're using a, a more linear one-third strategy. And you can see there's just a huge difference in terms of EV. We, we gain almost 1% of the pot when we go for the bigger size. And most of this EV actually comes from our overpass. You can see jacks, for example, is worth 102 chips when we use the small size. But when we go for the more polarized strategy, it's worth 116 chips. And this is not surprising, given that the overpass, uh, they're pretty much the only reason why we even have a batting range. So it's really important to choose a size that's uh, comfortable for overpass. And one that is just way too small given how strong they are. 
So there are some hands that actually gain EV with the smaller size. So most notably, we have sixes and sevens uh, that do benefit from being allowed to bet a small size for thin value and protection. But because we have so many more overpass compared to underpass, uh, overall it's actually the bigger size that wins. So in a nuts or air toy game where one player is perfectly polarized and uh, hands have no chance to improve, what we see is the, the polarized player betting 100% of his nuts, mixing in some bluffs, and then when he checks, he just always check votes. Uh, but here, it's a bit different. Uh, first of all, because the small blind isn't perfectly polarized, so he's going to have bluff catchers like 6s and 7s, uh, and also a lot of his air hands, they have some potential to improve. So what we see is that instead of betting 100% of our nuts, it's actually quite important to do a bit of slow play. So our nut 10 class, uh, which is pretty much over pair plus, is actually checking about a third of the time. Uh, and the function of checking this 33% uh, of hands is really to make sure that we don't just face a step too often. Uh, we don't want in position to just step something like 8x 100% of the time when we check. Uh, which is what he would be allowed to do if we had, didn't have any overpass in our checking range. So uh, imagine if we didn't slow play any hands, in position would just get to to bet so often versus us. Adex would definitely not be doing any checking, and that's really bad for hands like six or sevens, uh, and I guess ace king as well. It kind of kind of falls into the same category. They're all uh, hands with some showdown value that don't really want to face too much pressure, and also hands like king queen and king jack. Uh, these hands, they even though they don't have any showdown value, but they they're still kind of interested in seeing a turn. Uh, they have some chance to improve, uh, hit top pair, and win the pot. So the, the once again the function of checking our overpass, uh, it's really just to help out some of these hands. We don't want our opponent to be stabbing too often when we check. So if we have some strong hands in our checking range, it really decreases his uh, stabbing frequency. And that's good, uh, not just for hands like 6s and 7s, but for a lot of our overcuts as well. So this is what our strategy looks like in a nutshell. So C betting about half the time on average across all low bots. Uh, sets pretty much checking all the time, 2 pairs betting all the time, and so on. Uh, OP stands for overpass, TPs, TP stands for top pairs, uh, then we have middle pair, bottom pair. Underpass refer to any pocket pair below top pair. And then uh, high rank refers to ace high. And then air would just be the remainder of our hands with uh, no pair and no draw. And we also want to pay attention to the gray bars on the right. Uh, these represent the weights of the different hand classes. So uh, what we want to do is focus more on hand classes with a very high weight. Uh, for example, it's not so crucial when it comes to the way that we play sets and two pairs because they make up a very small part of our range. Uh, but if we mess up something like overpass, uh, or our overcut region, then we could potentially become really imbalanced. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just focus a bit more on these hand classes, uh, mainly the overpass and the, the overcuts. So first of all, when it comes to overpass, they're betting about 80% of the time on average. And because the lower overpass are a bit more vulnerable, they actually prefer betting over hands like aces and kicks. Uh, so on average, what this ends up looking like is uh, we end up mostly just pure betting our weaker overpass and then uh, as our overpair gets higher we start to mix in some checks so if you play it this way you're going to have a very reasonable strategy on most boards but if you want to be a bit more precise uh, the frequency at which we check our overpass it actually depends on how high or how low the board is as well so on a very low board like 7 3 deuce uh, what we see is a very high frequency of checks with hands like aces and kings but as the board gets higher uh, so 9 4 deuce rainbow, very similar texture but with a higher top card. Uh, what we see is aces and kings are actually betting much more often. And it's not so obvious to me why that's the case, but my guess would be that on the board like 9 4 deuce, uh, we have plenty of natural check calls like 6s, 7s and 8s, uh, pocket pass below the 9, that we can check call very comfortably and maybe even check call down. But on the board like 7 3 deuce, if we just rely on those hands, uh, there's not quite enough of them. We only have sixes and half combos of fives. So I imagine that's why it's uh, important to have a bit more aces and kings in our checking range. Uh, because we're going to be check calling quite a bit of ace king as well. Uh, and if we don't protect our range with enough, uh, with enough heads that actually have a pair, then this just allows uh, in position to value bet really thin. 
So on the, the, the average blank runout, what we typically see is um, we have to call down some ace king. And if we don't have like aces and sixes in our range, then that just allows in position to value bet really thin. Uh, in fact, he's already value betting really thin uh, up down to fives and sixes. Uh, but what's stopping him from value betting a hand like force uh, is the fact that we have some aces and uh, sixes and fives in our range. So uh, in position doesn't really want to value on himself. So if we come back to this nine for you spot, I think it makes a lot of sense why aces and kings are betting so much more often here. Uh, it's really just because we have hands like sevens and eights and sixes to do the job for us. Uh, even though aces is obviously much stronger than eights, they ha these hands have a very similar function uh, in the sense that we just don't want our opponent to go uh, super thin for value with hands like uh, ace four and pocket trees. We don't want him betting these hands for three streets. Um, he gets to capture a lot of pot share that way, and it's obviously terrible when we have a hand, uh, terrible for us when we have a hand like Ace King. Uh, so, yeah, there's there's no need to check aces here. Uh, sixes and sevens uh, fulfills that function. It's not like by checking aces we get to prevent our opponent from going for three streets with nine x, uh, because he almost always does it anyway. Like here, if um, we check call flop. And the bot, uh, the bot blanks out. What we see is uh, 9x is going bad, 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 like almost 100% of the time. And checking a few extra combos of aces uh, is not going to prevent that. What we're really interested in doing is to prevent our opponent from betting hands like uh, pocket fives and ace four. And we don't need a hand as strong as uh, aces to do that. And next, I want to take a look at the bot where overpass get bet 100% of the time. So on 10 deuce rainbow, uh, one of the reasons why we see this is uh, first of all because the bot is quite high, so there's uh, plenty of hands like knights and sevens and sixes that we can use to protect our checking range with, as we saw earlier. Uh, but on top of that, another reason why we see overpass betting so often is because we actually have two sets on this bot instead of one. So there's a very clear hierarchy when it comes to uh, the hands that we want to protect our checking range with. If possible, we always use sets. And only if we need more hands on top of our sets uh, do we consider checking our overpass. And that's because when we're using a large size, like a, a pot size C bet, it's really inefficient to be betting sets. A lot of the hands that are folding against us, uh, in fact, most of the hands that are folding against us, they're pretty much drawing dead. So this entire region of under pocket pairs and overcuts, uh, they're all pretty much dead versus our sets. So we really want to uh, keep these hands in our opponent's range by checking. And because the SPR is very low, there's also less opportunity cost when it comes to slow playing a set, and we don't get uh, punished as much for it compared to when the SPR is higher. So we always use these hands to protect our checking range if possible. Uh, even a hand like aces, it might not seem very vulnerable, but we would still prefer to check sets over aces because at least when we, we make a pot size bet with aces, we fold out some of these underpairs that have two outs versus us. Uh, but if we have 10s or 8s, we really want to keep these hands in. It's actually a good thing for us if uh, these hands hit their 2 outer, since we get to stack them and win a very big pot. So that's the reason why we don't do any uh, checking with our overpass here. It's just because there's plenty of better hands to do it with, like sets as well as uh, underpass. And to prove this, uh, I've actually run a separate sim over here. So the same 10-8 uh, use rainbow board, but what I've done is I've removed 10s and 8s from the small blinds range. And you can see as a result, uh, what happens is we end up checking aces about half the time. Uh, and, and once again, that's just because we lack better candidates to protect the tracking range with. Here, 9s and 7s and 6s are, are not quite enough to do the job. So we end up checking aces about half the time. And one more bot I want to look at is this 10.95 2 tone bot. So for similar reasons that we discussed earlier, there's just no checking with overpass at all. Uh, plenty of sets as well as underpass to do that with. Uh, but here there's also another reason why we would much rather bet uh, even a hand like aces. Uh, and that's because of the connectivity of the 9 and the 10. Uh, you can see that on, on most bots, if we make a pot size bet, uh, most of these weaker overcuts like King Queen and King Jack, uh, they're just going, going to be folding. But when the bot is 10-9 high, uh, these hands actually have a gut shot. So if our opponent has king-queen and king-jack uh, with a spade, he's always continuing. Uh, 
and therefore we can't really argue that uh, we're trying to check aces in order to keep descents in uh, because even if we bet aces descents are going to call us anyway so that's uh, yet another reason why we, we see our overpass betting all the time so if you think about all these examples that we just went through uh, you, you can kind of see that it's not so simple like our strategy isn't as simple as just betting all of our weaker overpass and then checking some of the higher overpass uh, it does depend a lot on the exact texture of the board as well. There's a lot of boards like we just saw where overpass are just betting all of the time. Uh, and there are also certain boards, especially the lower two-tone boards, um, like seven, three, deuce, two-tone, for example. We are doing like quite a bit of checking even with uh, some of the weaker overpass. Uh, well, maybe not that much, but you, you can see Jax is actually mixing a small frequency of checks uh, as well as nines and eights. But I think it's still fine if you want to just simplify your strategy by betting all of your weaker uh, overpairs and checking some aces and kings. Uh, you're not probably not going to make like a, a huge mistake if you do that. And so the next hand class that I'm going to go through is our overcuts. Really important to know how to play them given the huge amount of overcuts in our range. And just like with overpairs, there's very big differences uh, when it comes to how we play our overcuts on high bots and low bots. Uh, so you can see here on a 1054 two tone board, we're betting our overcuts at a really high frequency. It's not just the overcuts with a uh, backdoor flash draw that get bet a lot. Uh, King Queen, A Shack, even without the speed, uh, are getting bet quite often. Whereas on the seven high board, um, we're a bit more selective with the overcuts that we want to bet. Uh, so it's mostly just the overcuts with a backdoor flash draw. Uh, yeah, stuff like King Queen, King Jack without the speed. They are pretty much pure checks. And the main reason for this is that on the 10 high board, we have a few extra combos of top pair in our range. Uh, the small blind is 3-betting a bunch of 10x suited, a 10 off suit, uh, and because we have more value hands, we are just uh, allowed to bluff that much more. Uh, and also because these 10x hands now make 1 pair, it also means that we have less remaining air in our range. So if we want to uh, achieve the same value to bluff ratio, uh, if we want our betting range to be balanced, then it just means that we have to bluff our remaining air slightly more often. Uh, so that's the reason why you see such a big difference in terms of what our overcut hand class is doing. Um, you can see here, no pair, no draw. It's actually bluffing 56% uh, of the time. Whereas on the 7 high board, you know, because we have uh, no top pair, small blind is not 3-betting 7x with it, uh, we have more remaining air because 10x uh, is now uh, just air. If you look at the frequency that our uh, no pen no draw hand class is bluffing, it's uh, only betting at 37%. So quite a big difference. And uh, in general, you can play seven and eight high boards quite similarly, because if you look at small blinds, three betting range, uh, it kind of uh, cuts off at nine X suited. So we're three betting a lot of nine X suited and not much eight X suited and below. Um, so yeah, seven high boards, eight high boards, you just have to be a bit careful with the frequency that you bet your overpairs, uh, but on 9 high bots and 10 high bots, because we have this uh, extra amount of top pair and slightly less air, uh, it just means that you get to bet your overcuts much more often. And what I've noticed is that stuff like this tends to be very neglected. Uh, I've worked with a lot of students and a very common problem that I see is that people just tend to focus way too much on details. So if you show this sim to the average uh, regular, what he's going to take away from it would be to, uh, in terms of our overcuts, would be to bet those with a backdoor flash draw and check those uh, without uh, a backdoor flash draw. And they're not really going to be thinking about the bigger picture, like uh, how much top pair we have, if any, and how much uh, how many air hands we have as a percentage of our range. So this kind of approach where you focus a lot on the, the little details is going to be fine on certain boards. Like over here, um, this is pretty much how you're supposed to play anyway, because overcuts as a hand class, uh, they're betting quite infrequently. So if you only bet those with the backdoor flash draw, uh, you're going to arrive at about the right frequency. Uh, but if you do the same thing on the 10 high board, it's going to create a lot of problems. Um, because we have some extra top pair in our range and we have so much less air, uh, if you only bet overcuts with the speed, uh, you're just going to be way under bluffing. And so imagine if you happen to run into an opponent uh, who's on the, the foldy side, maybe he's just a, a nit or something. He doesn't even have to be trying to exploit you intentionally. Uh, it just happens that you're not bluffing enough and then he's folding a lot. So he's going to be uh, 
uh, exploiting you in that sense. So to avoid situations like these, you really want to be thinking about how good or bad the bot is for you and how often you should be betting your air hand class as a whole uh, before you start focusing on details like uh, whether or not to bet with the back of a straw. So now that we have a better understanding of the bigger picture, let's go ahead and look at some of these details. Uh, so as I was mentioning earlier, we always prefer to bet the overcuts with a speed. And that's uh, first of all because of the huge difference in terms of blocker effects. When we even even when we make a relatively large uh, pot size bet, our opponent is supposed to call us with a bunch of uh, overcuts with a speed. So there's just a, a huge difference in terms of removal removal effects when we have a hand uh, when we have a card like the king or queen of spades, we just block so much of our opponent's calling range. And compare this to when we have the, the king of hearts or the queen of hearts. Now we end up blocking a lot of his folding range instead. So it makes a lot of sense to always favor the overcuts with a speed. And on top of that, because we are out of position, uh, we're naturally going to favor betting a very equity-driven range because of the way that our opponent tends to respond to us. Uh, in position always prefers to defend by calling. So you can see he's doing a lot of calling, not much raising. And that just means it becomes very important uh, to bet hands that play well on the turn, right? So hands like uh, King Queen with a spade, these are hands that can turn uh, some strong draws. This sort of playability just becomes more important when uh, our opponent is going to react by doing a lot of calling. So compare this to when we are in position, for example. Uh, if we're in position, sometimes you might even see the opposite, where we prefer to bet hands without the backdoor, and then we just uh, check back hands with the backdoor and to, to try and see a free turn and to turn our backdoor equity. So the main difference, once again, it has to do with the way that uh, our opponent is going to react versus a bet. So if we're in position and he's out of position, uh, he's always going to defend by calling less and check raising more. So we don't really want to bet a hand like King Queen with a spade uh, and get blown off our equity. Whereas with King Queen without a spade, it's, it's just a very easy bet pull. So another heuristic that you can use, uh, and this applies to rainbow bots as well, is to bet your lower overcuts more often and to check your stronger overcuts more often. Uh, this is something that you see a lot, Not just uh, it's not specific to 3-bet bots. So here, for example, uh, night 10 and jack 10, you can see they're very high frequency bets. And the reason why we bet them so often is because we just get to fold out so many hands that dominate us. Uh, we don't want to create a situation where uh, we check this hand and then our opponent checks back a hand like a queen 10 or something that would have folded to a bet and then you know we return a 10 and then he stacks us so that's why uh, these weak overcuts get bet more often and that's the same with hands like king queen uh, ace queen ace check without the spade they're just very high frequency checks we don't really want to bet and then fold out all of the hands that we dominate and then when you go up to ace king you'll see that we start to bet a bit more often and that's because we're at the point where we are starting to get caught by just enough worse hands, uh, especially on rainbow bots where our opponent is supposed to call us with a lot of ace queen. Uh, it can make a lot of sense to bet a hand like ace king. And you want to look out for the suits of your hand as well. So as always, we, we generally prefer to bet uh, with a spade in our hand, um, specifically when we have ace king. Uh, ace king with the king of spades makes uh, a lot of sense to bet call. Uh, you'll see that versus uh, so when we make this pot size bet and we face the gem uh, the solver is actually calling off hands like ace king with the king of spades uh, even ace queen and ace jack with the, the queen or the jack of spades and the idea behind this uh, is that if you look at our opponent's jamming range we're actually doing quite well against it because most of the hands that our opponents are jamming so his bluffs are mostly just nut flush draws or king high flush draws uh, and when we have something like ace king with the king of spades we're doing quite well versus those hands their ace is not live uh, and we also block one of their flash draw outs. Uh, so it's either we're up against uh, a flash draw that we dominate, or if you look at some of these uh, protection gems that our opponent is making, uh, hands like knights and tens, these are all hands that we're in pretty good shape against as well. We have two overcuts and a backdoor flash draw, so it's it's not the, the end of the world if we uh, run into one of these hands. And uh, especially versus opponents who will jam hands like flash draws a bit too often, uh, the EV of bad calling a hand like Ace King with the King of Speed is going to go even higher. And next, I'm just going to talk a bit about in position step. So, some important ideas are to use a relatively small step size. Something like one third of the pot works quite well across the various low bots. And the, the reason behind sizing down is that we have lots of one pair hands in our range that are quite vulnerable. 
uh, out of position is checking a very overcut heavy range. So if we have something like sevens, uh, seven X or eights or nines, uh, it, it does. We do have a lot of incentive to bet and fold out most of these overcuts. Uh, but at the same time, all of these one pair hands, they're not, uh, they're not super nutted hands because out of position is still mixing in some slow plays with his overpass. So if we try to go for a size that's too big, what happens is uh, all of a sudden the small blind ends up folding most of his overcuts and uh, the range that we end up getting caught by is just going to be way too strong. Uh, it's just going to be mostly overpass. Uh, so instead we just go for a much smaller wanted size and what this does is uh, it still does the job of folding out uh, a lot of the weaker overcuts. Uh, but crucially, we don't lose as much when we do run into an overpair. And another thing that the small size does is that it induces uh, the small blind to check race with most of his overpairs, so that if we do bet and face a call, uh, then it just means that small blind's range is much more capped. And then now we can uh, start to go for a more geometric size on the third. So hence, like 8 and 9 here, there's no problem going for 2 thirds or 3 quarters spot bet. Uh, and then just uh, putting the rest of the money in on the river uh, because look at how capped uh, the small blinds check calling range on the flop is more than two thirds of his range is just uh, going to be overcut so ace high is 60 percent king high is eight percent um so these one pair hands uh in, in positions range they're actually quite nutted in a sense uh so you, you don't typically see people playing for stacks with hands like fives and sixes uh, but it is a part of the equilibrium, at least in theory. So if you don't think that it's a good idea to go for three streets with these types of hands because maybe you're not uh, you're not getting called down light enough, out of position is supposed to call down with a significant portion of his ace king. So if you don't think that it, it makes sense to jam with these hands, then you also have to understand that there, there has to be some other part of the game tree where out of position is losing EV. And uh, in this case... If he's not calling light enough, then it just means that uh, he's not defending enough of his range somewhere along the way, either the turn or the river, and your bluffs are going to make uh, a lot of money in those lights. So you, what you can do is increase either your, your double or, or triple barrel frequency, depending on where you think your opponent is overfolding. And similarly, if you don't think that your opponents uh, are going for three streets with hands like sixes and seven x, uh, then it also means that they're losing EV in some other part of the game tree. So in this case, there's uh, only one of two possibilities. Um, either he is so he, if he's not going for thin value on the river with these hands, and he's continuing to bluff the hands that he should, then it just means that he's massively uh, over bluffing, and you'd have a very profitable call not with uh, not just with ace king but with uh, hands like ace queen and ace check as well. And the second possibility would be uh, that he's uh, so he's not going for thin value with hands like sixes and seven x, uh, and he's also not bluffing all of these hands that he should. So that's going to mean that his batting range is somewhat balanced. But in this case, your your ace high hands are just going to uh, get to show down much more often than they should, since your uh, opponent is going to be going bad 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 at a very low frequency. So if you have some idea of uh, what uh, the players in your pool are doing in this sort of spot, you can actually make a lot of money because the equilibrium looks really different from uh, what the average player imagines it to, to be like. So that's all I have for you guys. This is a summary of uh, what we've covered in this video. We want to size up as a small blind c better since our range is very naturally polarized. And also we saw that overpass are betting about 80% of the time on average. Uh, although this does change depending on how high or how low the board is, uh, overcuts betting about 40% of the time. Once again, uh, some variation based on how high or low the board is. Uh, there's also a preference for betting low, lower overcuts to fold out uh, overcuts that dominate us uh, and checking more of our stronger overcuts to keep the uh, dominated hands in. And uh, of course, we want to favor betting overcuts with uh, backdoor flash draw because uh, of uh, playability and, and blocker effects. And one last thing we saw was that in position wants to use a relatively small wanted pot step size uh, and then go very thin for value across the turn and the river because uh, once the small blind check calls the flop, his range is actually supposed to be really capped. So uh, you can play similar to this if you're playing higher stakes and then uh, when it comes to lower stakes, people are playing quite differently. So you want to think about what the players in your games are doing and then uh, adjust accordingly.
So we've come to the end of this video. As always, leave a like if you found it useful. Uh, I'm actually still offering a 10-hour coaching package. So if uh, anyone's interested in coaching, do feel free to drop me a message. This has been QI for Run It Once, and I'll see you guys in the next video.